All right. It is 2.55, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kevin Nilsson, and uh, I run a bunch of the, the gRPC team. Uh, I manage the Go, Java, and Python team and uh, work at Google, uh, where we use gRPC a ton. And then we love having all of you uh, make gRPC a huge success. Uh, speaking me, with me today is uh, Gina and Richard. As I mentioned, this was a very, very last minute talk, so you don't see their name in the, in the system, but uh, they are in the right place and they are in the slide deck and they're prepared and ready. Cool. So um, I wanted to share just a, a little bit of kind of overview type things um, with gRPC, kind of show you kind of the relevance and the growth um, and, and some of that before we share a bunch of uh, things that are new and exciting um, in gRPC. So here you can see sort of the, the GitHub stars trending over time. And it's really exciting for me. You know, every year when I look at this, when, when we're evaluating how are we doing, are we still relevant, are we still growing, are people still loving gRPC, uh, this is one of the things that we look at. And um, it's really exciting to see that continued growth, the continued kind of engagement, um, all of the, the questions we get um, asked on our mailing list, everything that we get out there on, on GitHub, do absolutely appreciate it. And then you can see this massive number um, of pull requests across many of uh, the various languages. Um, another cool metric I want to share is the number of weekly downloads we have in several of the, the different languages. Um, you can drink that water, it's mine. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, with, with Java for Maven, uh, 4.8 million downloads every week. Um, in, in Python, uh, 19 million weekly downloads. And in Node uh, for NPM, 9 million weekly downloads. So really, really huge, huge usage. We're really happy with it. I, I'm thrilled at the success and have all of you um, to thank for that. And, you know, we want this to continue to grow. People, you know, and we would love any feedback you have um, or request. We're always, you know, really trying to, to, to make this ecosystem grow and continue to evolve. So, so please, um, you know, keep giving the great feedback that everyone has, and we look forward to, to more. Um, one of the things that, that we got as feedback um, as we started doing more and more of these talks as, as, as COVID um, ended, you know, talking to folks at, at both KubeCon and the gRPC conference that we run, gRPC Conf. Um, and one of the feedbacks we got was a lot of our documentation, tools, blog posts, um, a lot of this area was lacking compared to other similar projects. And so we made a really, really big effort um, in, in making improvements there. And so over the last year and a half, we've been heavily focused in this, this directions. Um, one of the, the efforts that I've really spearheaded making happen within the team. And you can see even just in the last few months since the beginning of this year, we've added six new guides um, in the gRPC IO documentation site and um, three new code examples. And those were areas where, you know, we really have almost plugged all the holes and got everything that we want. And then we're going to next go through and look at all the GRFCs and try to figure out, you know, mapping GRFCs to user guide entries, figuring out where it makes sense and continue um, to close gaps here. So we're really excited about this. And then another initiative that we kicked off uh, about a year ago is trying to get more and more content on YouTube more relevant content, more timely content, because one of the things that we learned is that all of you kind of enjoy consuming things in that way, um, as do I. Um, I do, again, I wanna invite all of you to come and join us in Sunnyvale. You can see the Google Cloud headquarters. Um, we've got, there's a really nice event space there um, that, that is set up for doing events like this. Uh, we're gonna have three tracks, hopefully some code labs, and this will be a one day event um, in Sunnyvale, California. And we would love to have all of you um, there. And call for papers opened up 
just this week. I think it was two days ago, and uh, the link is on there. Um, so you can see that, and we would love to have you uh, make a submission and uh, love to hear you talk. And we're hoping that uh, a lot of the, the content there, or a majority of the content, is actually from the, the community rather than from the maintainers. We'd like to give the community and make this a community effort and a community-driven uh, event. One of the things I'm really excited to announce is we are heavily investing in, in Rust and want to make it one of our supported languages within gRPC. And this is something that we heard loud and clear um, in Detroit, in Amsterdam, um, in the past, in Chicago, and then also in Sunnyvale at our gRPC conf. Every single time, this is probably the most frequently asked question that we've had across all those uh, events has been, you know, where we're reaching out to you has been, will you be adding support for Rust? Um, so today, uh, Tonic has a, a great implementation um, of Rust that has great adoption. We're working very closely with Tonic to see what we can do together, what makes sense for the future, but it is a decision that we've made to come up with, um, you know, an XCS compliant, and fully compliant gRPC implementation in Rust. So this is a pretty big deal, and uh, we'll have a lot more to announce um, at gRPC Conf uh, later this year. And um, you know, absolutely, if if this is an area that's interesting to you, we would love your help and support uh, making this a big success. We are looking for a handful of people who um, want to give early feedback, want to be part of the you know, early design process, some of the decisions we're making, um, go over designs, things like that. Help be part of the, the community making uh, Rust happen. And so if you're interested, we would love, it'd be a huge gift to us. Um, there's a, a, a barcode here or a link. Um, please fill out the form and, and let us know how we can get you um, engaged and, and what you're doing with Rust. A um, few simple questions would, would absolutely love your help on that. Uh, finally, I just wanted to share a couple of links um, that are out there, our main website, um, you know, where, where you can find all the information about gRPC. Um, there's a YouTube channel that I know many of you, you know, we're just starting to recap that and add new content. And we're going to continue to add a lot of short five-minute videos as we add features. So I want to encourage everyone to do that. Um, we've got a, a Twitter channel or X, whichever you prefer. And um, finally, there's a mailing list. And the mailing list is really our main form of chat and communication with the maintainers. And so it's a great place to get your support uh, or get support for issues that you have, ask your questions and be able to talk directly um, with the team. Um, and then finally, um, we have something we call uh, Meet the Maintainers, where if you would like to um, come and do a one hour kind of meet and greet with someone from the gRPC team, um, it's something that we love to do where we hear about how are you using gRPC, maybe what would you like to see from it, where is gRPC doing great so we continue to do that, and where is it not doing so great where we can fix those problems. And so absolutely sign up um, for one of the Meta Maintainer talks uh, or sessions. Um, you can schedule within the calendar there and you'll meet with someone like Richard, Gina, or myself um, to do that. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Richard and Gina um, to kind of jump into more of the, the, the features. But uh, my name is Kevin, and again, uh, we'll be around after the talk. Um, you know, if, if there is anything that you want to share, we, we would love to help all of you with your applications, any questions, um, any way we can, um, and really appreciate uh, all the engagement we've had from the community. So with that, I'll hand it off to Richard. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Richard Belleville. I am the tech lead for gRPC Python. I do a bunch of dev work for that, as well as Kubernetes integrations uh, and service mesh, if you saw the last talk relevant to that. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about today is developer tooling, just a few tools that will help you out on your gRPC journey. Um, gRPC debug is a command line interface. 
It provides you with a range of debug information, such as stats about how many RPCs have been sent or have failed, as well as address resolution results and XGS configuration for service mesh. Uh, so reach for this tool whenever you need to troubleshoot gRPC. Then there's gRP curl. Uh, similar to the curl CLI tool that we all know and love, uh, GRP curl enables you to send RPCs from the CLI, either with or without reflection. Uh, GRP curl does a great job letting you inspect the types within your API, so it provides this really satisfying dev loop of query what an API looks like, and then manually call it based on what you just learned from GRP, from GRP curl. Um, next up, a tool that I'm sure many of you already know and love, uh, Postman now has full support for gRPC, allowing you to make RPCs from a GUI, including full support for streaming RPCs. It is packed full of features that make it work great with gRPC. Uh, for more details, hop on over to the Postman website or check out the excellent talk that Postman did on the topic at gRPConf 2023 on YouTube. Moving on to something close to home at KubeCon, we've got the Gateway API. If you saw the talk at 2 p.m., this will be a repeat for you. Uh, the Kubernetes Gateway API is a recent API that provides a more extensible way to manage traffic routing in Kubernetes clusters. It is designed as a revamp of the ingress resource to get rid of vendor-specific implementations and annotations. The special interest group behind the Gateway APIs identified the most common use cases for annotations on ingress resources and built them directly into the Gateway API. Uh, we have worked with that special interest group to introduce a new resource within the Gateway API called gRPC Route, so that you can more idiomatically route gRPC traffic rather than routing at the level of HTTP. Uh, gRPC Route is moving from experimental to standard this April. Um, so it's currently supported by GCP Traffic Director and a bunch of other controllers. Um, the other really exciting thing in this space is Gamma, uh, using the Gateway APIs to manage not just ingress, but also service mesh use cases. So we have been deeply engaged in the design process there to ensure that gRPC proxy list service mesh has first class support in the APIs. So now you have the ability to use vendor agnostic Kubernetes resources to manage your gRPC proxy list service mesh or whatever service mesh you'd like to use gRPC with. Uh, we are also excited to share that stateful session affinity support is now available in gRPC C++. It is a load balancing technique that ensures all requests from a particular client session are routed to the same backend server. This is useful for applications that maintain per session state, uh, such as shopping carts, user profiles, or game sessions. Uh, gRPC implements stateful session affinity using cookies. When the first request is sent out, the gRPC client XDS stack routes it to a server as normal based on the configured LB policies, such as round robin or pick first. In this example, request one happens to go to server two. Server two encodes its identity into a cookie and populates the set cookie uh, header uh, in the response and uses the cookie in it to define a session. All subsequent requests in the session need to be populated with this cookie, and the gRPC routing stack will ensure that, that all requests with that cookie get to server two. So here, the client wants to send request two, also in the same session as request one. It populates request two with the cookie returned in response one, and the gRPC XDS stack routes that to server two based on the cookie. Um, until cookie expiration or until server two goes down, all requests with this cookie are routed to server two. As a result, you're guaranteed to always hit a warm cache for that session, significantly speeding up your application. Big win for latency critical applications. And with that, I'll hand it over to Gina. Thank you, Richard. All right, hello everyone, my name is Gina Ye, and I'm a TOM, I'm tech lead manager at Google leading the gRPC Java and Go team. So in the previous slide, Richard talked about what Stateful Session Affinity is and how it is, works in general. And now let's take a look how to enable it um, on Traffic Director. We have introduced a custom resource called GCP Session Affinity Policy. And in the YAML file, you set the cookie TTL time in seconds. And um, the session cookie will be expired at the time that you provide it here. 
before it's expired, the request was a session cookie are guaranteed to be sent to the same backend. And then you set the target reference to specify which route or, or service that you want to enable staple session availability on. And that's all you need to do. And if you're interested in these features um, or learn more details about it, um, we have a short link at the bottom, and that will take you to our uh, talk about Staffel Session Affinity at CoolCom last year. Another gRPC new feature is custom backend metrics for load balancing. So this is a mechanism in the gRPC library that allows you to inject your custom metrics at, a, at your gRPC server. And these metrics can be used for load balancing. So we follow the open request cost aggregation standard, and you can report your custom metrics in two ways. The first option is your server attaches the metrics in the trailing metadata when RPC finishes. And another option is to periodically sending the metrics out of band. Custom backend metrics is available on production now. And you, if you want to learn more details, you can always check the short link that I have below, which will take you to our developer guide, um, which also includes the example code in multiple languages. We recently added support of weighted run robin load balancing policy and it can be used with the custom backend metrics that um, I just covered in the previous slides. And it's really simple um, to configure your server if you're using GCP traffic director. You just set the custom policy as weighted run robin with the parameters based on your use cases. If you prefer to send the metrics out of band, you set the enable or OB load report to true. And we also have additional parameters um, for you to fine tune the behavior to meet, your, to meet your use cases. You can also use the, um, our Weighted Run Robin implementation, even if you are not using Traffic Director. And here we have an example code in Go, and you just set the low balancing config with the configuration in JSON format when you call um, the dial function from your gRPC Go application. And once you configure LB policy as a weighted round robin, the next step is to send the metrics from your backends. And at the top, here is the formula that how gRPC load balancer selects a, a, selects a backend service with the metrics that you send to us, which includes the CPU utilization, the QPS, EPS, and the error penalty. And below is an example of using the out-of-band reporting. And um, in the gRPC Go server code, you create a server metrics recorder with the options that fit your use cases. For example, like the minimum reporting interval, and then you register your recorder and start sending the metrics like the CPU utilization, QPS, EPS, et cetera. And that's all you need to, that's all you need to do to enable way they run Robin um, provided by gRPC. And um, as you know, you can always find the uh, more details uh, from the show link that I have on the slides. So next, randomized pick first. So we are extending the existing pick first policy with the new flag to shuffle the address order that your name resolver returns. Um, as you may know, pick first is a very straightforward LB policy and just like it's name. Um, the name, when the res name resolver returns a list of the addresses, we try to connect with the first one and then connect to the second one if the first attempt fails. So pick first is commonly used with the DNS server shuffling the address order. And in some cases where the DNS server doesn't support shovel or, like, or randomization, you can simply flip the flag, shovel address list in your gRPC code, and we will shuffle the order for you. And we are excited to announce that gRPC is adding support for open telemetry. And this is a powerful tool for you to gain insights into your system's behavior. And it helps you to quickly troubleshoot the problem, improve the performance and reliability of your gRPC applications so that you can make better decisions about how to architect or manage your system. From 1.61 uh, release, 
you can get these metrics to help you to analyze your drop PC latency, uh, your RPC latency, QPS, error rate, or, or even like uh, the payload sizes, and we are adding more metrics um, and extending the support to other languages. Also, um, the open telemetry tracing design is almost completed. Um, it's in review, but almost done. Um, so stay tuned for more updates on that. So here I want to show you um, how you can integrate the open telemetry metrics into your job PC application. So you will need to add a few lines of your code in your application. And here we are showing the code snippets um, in C++. So in the main function, create an open telemetry meter provider and um, add a Prometheus exporter. And then use the open telemetry plugin builder to set the meter provider that you just created. And um, register the plugin by calling build and register global. And after the registration, gRPC operations uh, performed will be, all the gRPC operations performed will be monitored and the stats will be reported through the configured Prometheus uh, exporter. So a few more advanced features that I'd like to take this chance to talk about. The first one is custom LB policy. If our building LB policy doesn't meet your needs, you can definitely bring your own custom LB policy. Um, and also, we recently added support for RBAC, HTTP for service, and Methoscoped client authorization on XDS-enabled gRPC servers. And lastly, gRPC clients currently support both IPv4 and IPv6. However, most implementations doesn't support, uh, doesn't have support for individual backends to have both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. And we are actively working on it. So in the near future, Resolver and the LB Policy API will support multiple addresses per endpoint, and um, happy eyeballs will be used to determine the address. And next, we recently added support for Java modules. So the module name of the gRPC jar file will be automatically generated. And another feature that we have in gRPC Java is least request load balancing. So which distributes um, the incoming request to the server with the least number of active connections um, at the time the request is received. It is designed to improve the server utilization and the response times by, ensure, by ensuring that the requests are evenly distributed across the available servers. So an, um, an interesting fact, Java implementation of this uh, in gRPC is uh, contributed by Spotify. So we want to encourage all of you to bring your ideas to gRPC and uh, benefit all the gRPC users across the world. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Richard. Thank you, Gina. All right, so over the past few releases of gRPC Python, we have removed all external dependencies. So the library is now lighter and easier to install than ever. Uh, we've also added support for Apple Silicon, so M1 and M2 chips. In the latest release, you'll find Mac universal dynamic libraries, which can be run on either ARM or x86 chips. In gRPC C core, the basis for C++, Python, Ruby, and PHP, we have introduced Event Engine, a new public interface for applications to provide custom implementations for I.O. and asynchronous execution. For example, you can, use, you can drive gRPC using external event loops, such as libuv. You can implement your own event engine in C++ and override various methods with the behavior that you want. Simply call set event engine factory to get started using event engine. On the C side, we have recently upgraded the way we notify you when asynchronous RPC events occur. Uh, we're excited to introduce the new callback API. You no longer need to manage threads and regularly pull completion queues, which can be tricky to get right. Instead, the gRPC C library will invoke uh, user provided callbacks when RPC actions complete. The callback API provides a set of methods for your application to initiate operations. Your application can also override methods like onReadDone and onWriteDone to get notifications when RPC actions complete. And back over to Gina. 
Right. So for gRPC Go, uh, we introduce a new channel state, idle as an initial state, and it will transition into ready state when the connections are established. Um, whenever there is a period of time without using gRPC or RPC, we will temporarily update the channel state back to idle and close the open connections to optimize the performance for your applications. When the next RPC comes in, the connection will be automatically reestablished for you, so no additional effort or implementation is required on your side. This feature has been available for Java and the C Core, and we current we recently added into gRPC Go, so you can custom and you can customize the idle timeout with the code that I have on the slides. Another new feature that was released in gRPC Go is least request load balancing. So if you're interested in using least request load balancing that I just mentioned earlier in the GoLand, check out the latest re, uh, check out the latest release that we have of the gRPC Go. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the talk. Um, as Kevin mentioned earlier, gRPC Conf is currently calling for speakers. So um, submit your idea at the, at the, with the first URL that I have on the slides and visiting the gRPC.io site for documentation and the example code, subscribing to our YouTube channel to get notifications when we have new videos available, um, joining our monthly meetup um, to get the latest updates on gRPC. And you can always request a conversation with the maintainers to help answer any questions that you might have. And you also might want to join in the gRPC mailing list to get the latest updates. And finally, you can also follow us on the X or Quick X or Twitter. Thanks for joining us, and we have a couple minutes to take questions. Uh, about Rust support uh, for new projects, is it better to use existing implementation like Prost or uh, Tonic, or it's better to wait for the announcement? I mean, I think that's up to, to you and your application and what makes sense on the, on the time frame. You know, we are hoping to move really quickly. Um, we haven't quite figured out Although we've had many meetings with Tonic and we're trying to figure things out, we haven't finalized exactly what we're gonna do yet. Um, as far as timing, I mean, I think it's hard to guess, but I would think you may end up waiting, I don't know, we, we're hoping sometime this year we have something to release. And if that timeline doesn't work for you, then you know, obviously um, you need to do what's best for your application. So, yeah, yeah. Um, does gRPC web is part of the gRPC project and um, do you know if there's any plan to support it more fully? I don't know if that. Uh, yeah, gRPC web is part of the gRPC project. You know, we sit pretty close to the people who work on that. Um, there are some plans uh, at the moment to explore extensions to gRPC web, formal extensions, that will enable all arities. I don't think the specific technology has been nailed down yet, whether that's um, WebSockets or Fetch. Um, but yeah, you de can definitely expect uh, more updates on that in the near future. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, actually, we apparently do have a video about those updates already. So yeah, it's on the, our channel, our YouTube channel. Perfect. Check out our YouTube channel. We put it on the channel like days ago. Fresh off the, the presses. Hi, I have two unrelated questions. The first one is, um, I hear about this um, Reflect API being enabled and whatnot. How do you cope with the security air quote risks of it. So what is the expected value for uh, Reflect on production? Is it enabled or disabled? I, I missed the first part. The, the what API? The Reflect API? Ah. Reflection. Oh, reflection, reflection yeah. yeah, sorry. Okay, so the, the question was, uh, how is it enabled for? Like in, in prod, do you enable it in general? Because mm -hmm. like in your previous talk, you noticed that you can trigger this Boolean to or false. And I was wondering if, for instance, it could be guarded by some, you know, authentication step first or something. I see, I see. So, um, 
to enable reflection on your server, it's actually, a, for each language, generally a separate package that you have to pull in. So like for Python, there's the gRPCIO package, like pip install gRPCIO. To get reflection, you actually have to pip install gRPCIO reflection. And then there's a method that you can call to add it to your server. So it is something that you do have to um, manually include at the moment. Maybe you can improve the UX there. Um, if we're talking about gateway API, Yes, there are security implications, which is why we would probably do that as an opt-in, not an opt-out. Okay. And the second question was more about the Go um, SDK, and I was quite curious when I used the... I need to find the word. Um, the service configuration in Daira, it's really a specific question. I was just wondering why it was expressed as JSON as opposed to, you know, a builder or an option pattern or something like this. Yeah, so service config is actually cross-language. Um, the same service config should work whether it's C++, Python, Go, Node. Um, that's why we use JSON everywhere. Um, service config you can supply manually. Uh, a couple of Gina slides had examples of that. Um, Proxyless service mesh, our XDS configuration, it actually dynamically translates the XDS into service config in order to make that work. So theoretically, any like service mesh config, you can express via service config. Hi, uh, so I'm also a gRPC web user, and it's not really ideal, right, having to use gRPC web. I was wondering if in the future uh, gRPC could be made to run natively in the browser, like maybe uh, it's trailers, right, that are not present. So I don't know uh, with HTTP free or if it could be made to do it. Thanks. Yeah, so definitely a, a good direction to look at. Um, so yeah, the, the big issue there is trailers within HTTP2. Um, we've definitely talked to browser implementers about you know fully implementing the HTTP2 spec. Um, gRPC web currently is the way that we're, we're looking at improving that. Um, the difficulty there is uh, not necessarily with, with proxies, but with the limitations of, of gRPC web, I understand. You can't have all of the arities, um, you know, Unary, client streaming, server streaming, by die streaming. Um, and the extensions that I mentioned in, in the earlier answer will enable gRPC web to handle you know, a full gRPC API. So anything that you can run um, backend to backend, you will be able to run browser to backend as well, but probably with a proxy in the middle. Um, to, to, to improve the UX of that, um, in the 2 p.m. Gateway API talk, uh, talk, I showed off some potential extensions to the Gateway API that um, will help in setting up uh, uh, an ingress proxy that will do that translation for you, so you don't have to manually manage that middleware. Awesome. Oh, one more, two more questions. Here we go. No, just one. I was just curious because... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, gRPC is using H2 as a transport protocol, um, and Quick is a thing more and more, right? So is there um, anything happening on the transport side of things to evaluate Quick and whether it would make sense at all? Um, I am not aware of active uh, exploration of it. Um, we haven't had any major complaints from people. Um, so far, for the most part, the complaints we've heard have been three is bigger than two. Um, we we kind of want a, a more compelling argument before we, we start looking into that. Um, there have been some prototypes written for HTTP 3. So um, C++ definitely has an alternative transport using Cronet, which is the Chromium implementation. So if you really wanted to try that out, you can compile that yourself with, with gRPC C++. Yeah, but definitely, like, a handful of folks have been doing investigation on HTTP 3. Um, so far, we haven't seen that it has fit the needs. You know, obviously, if there's something we're missing, please let us know. But um, so far, that's, that hasn't been the case. I think we're going to take one last question, because uh, we have two minutes. But Gina, Richard, and I will be outside in the hall afterwards. And so if you do have more questions, um, please feel free to join us out there. So last question. So uh, I just wanted to ask about protobuf. Uh, quite struck that you never mentioned it once. What's shed some some thoughts there? Um, do you have a more specific question, or I, I... Well, who do who do we talk to about protobuf? Who's telling us what's new in protobuf? I see. How how do we get protobuf to work faster with Go? Um, 
Yeah, the, I mean, we, we will definitely have the protobuf team at GRPC Conf. Probably not a great answer, but they did speak uh, last time, and they are in it. Yeah, it is two teams. So Wimbo, who's my peer, um, at, at one point in time, he actually managed the protobuf team. But as things grow and we invest bigger and bigger, um, they are independent teams. Uh, we meet with them quite frequently. Um, and the two teams work really, really closely together. Um, but definitely, I would say protobuf specific things would be best to go to them. But feel free to let us know if, if you want us to help make those, those connections. Great. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, really appreciate everybody coming, uh, helping us make GRPC a, a continued success, both here at the conference and, and out, in the, out in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I want to thank you all. And again, Gina, Richard, and I will be out in the hall if you have any more questions. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>